The search for a legitimate reason to use certain races as inferior was putting gargantuan pressure on society and science to come up with an answer as to why. It was the hot topic of the day, and there was a reason for that. The economy of the United States and many other countries, Europe included, many other countries, the economy was flourishing because of slavery. The perpetuation of the race of Aborigines is not to be desired. That they are an inferior race of human beings it is vain to deny. The probable extinction of the race from natural causes is a proof of this. And it is no more desirable that any inferior race should be perpetuated than that the transmission of a hereditary disease should be encouraged. This was written by the Geelong advisor in Australia, May 2, 1846. There, I could put up a thousand of these things. They really believed that the aborigines were inferior. They were somehow lower humans. And this belief about all kinds of peoples and nations was throughout the entire globe. I want you to see something that you probably have not noticed, but you have. Charles Darwin's book, on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Do you know that was his full title of the book? Does it leave absolutely any doubt in your mind? This or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. 1859, November 24, what happened after that? Civil War, and a fight between the North and the South and slavery, and the, the fight in the South was supported and fueled by this book. With savages, the weak in body or mind are soon eliminated, and those that survive commonly exhibit a vigorous state of health. We civilized men, on the other hand, do our utmost to check the process of elimination. We build asylums for the imbecile, the maimed, and the sick. We institute poor laws, and our medical men exert their utmost skill to save the life of everyone to the last moment. Thus, the weak members of civilized societies propagate their kind. No one who has attended to the breeding of domestic animals will doubt that this will be highly injurious to the race of man, excepting in the case of man himself. Hardly anyone is so ignorant as to allow his worst animals to breed. Who wrote this? Charles Darwin, The Descent of Man, the book's right here. At some future period, not very distant, measured by centuries, the civilized races will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. The break between man and his nearest allies will then be wider, for it will intervene between man and a more civilized state, as we may hope, even then the Caucasian and some ape as low as a baboon instead of as now between the Negro or Australian and the gorilla. That was written, you can't read that down here, but it was written by Charles Darwin, and that again is in Descent of Man. There are, I mean, this is the evolutionist Bible. I have 66 books that I can look at for my worldview. They have these books. One gentleman named Hitler studied and read this and believed in a superior race and found that it was his duty, his calling, to exterminate all other races. The imbecile, you see, the poor people, those in sick houses, those in, in sanitariums were all killed and destroyed. The gypsies were all killed and destroyed. And then he turns his attention to the Jews. You see, and all of this was perpetrated by the fact that Hitler was a strong evolutionist. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. This is where the fight starts. Did we come from nothing? And did we emerge from a slime pond? Or did God create us in his image? If God created us in his image, how can we enslave one another? How can we beat one another? How can we be cruel to one another? But yet, if other people are animals, 
just barely above that of an animal, capable of looking and acting human, that's totally different. And the way they view this, the study of evolution has affected us not only in the sciences, but has affected us in the humanities, affected us in government, it has affected us in the way we see human behavior and the development of human behavior. Philip E. Johnson wrote a book in 1991, Darwin on Trial. He came up with five, five points. Philip Johnson is a, is a law professor at UC Berkeley. Okay, so he put Darwin on trial to see what facts he had, what, what really, it would, would it hold up today under the scrutiny of the UC Berkeley law professor. Number one, evolution is grounded in a philosophical belief called naturalism. The belief that a large body of evidence supports evolution is an illusion. Evolution is a religion. It's a religion. They have their priests. We have our ministers. They have their books. We have our books. They have their indoctrination in their classes. We do too. They are a religion. If evolution were a scientific hypothesis, it would have been abandoned long ago. Atheism is a basic supposition in evolution and therefore cannot be drawn as a conclusion from it. You can't, you cannot be an evolutionist and also be a deist. Now I would be glad to talk to some of you later on when I have a chance that are deistic evolutionists. I will write to you. I will give you information. I'll help you. You can't straddle the fence. It's not possible. Theologically or otherwise. And it hurts. He's out of